Hi everybody and welcome to another After Effects tutorial. My name is Aton and today I will be showing you how to use Element 3D's shatter type effect thing where it'll break into a million pieces or come together and make one thing that looks sort of like that. Let me just wait for it to play through again a little smoother now that it's rendered. Here we go. Now I have to admit, I've been really excited about this tutorial. I've been playing around with lots of different cool examples of how to use this. So let's get started, and I'm going to show you how to make both of these. Okay, so we're going to make a new composition. So settings look good. I'm actually going to make this 24, but doesn't matter. Okay, so now um, we'll be making this one first, the... Um, that one. So I'm going to make a new solid. This is going to be our background. So I'm just going to put on ramp. Here we go. Just drag that on. Bring the start of the ramp right into the center there. And then change it to radial ramp and bring out the end of the ramp just back a little bit. So it'll create that cool effect. Then turn the inside of the ramp. I'm going to change the colors up a little, maybe to a red on the inside. And like, uh, mm, what would look good? Maybe just a lighter red. That's that looks all right. Or you could just I have the original one that was like dark yellow on the outside, lighter on the inside. Maybe we could reverse these colors. That might look cooler. So I'm just gonna use a color picker to get that and make this. There, that looks better. Okay, so I'm gonna use the text tool and I'm just gonna type, you learn FX. There we go. That's looking pretty cool just because I already have this font that I'm using. Just do whatever you want with your text to make it look cool. Okay, now just select both of these. Just click on one, control click on the other, or just click the mouse button and drag it right there. Right click, pre-compose. Okay, and move all attributes into a new composition. Okay, so now what we've basically done is made these two, these two layers into like one piece of footage, but we can still go back and edit it. That's what a pre-comp is in case you were not aware. So now I'm gonna right click and make another solid here we go, it doesn't matter the color. I'll make this one red, sure, why not? Okay, now I'm gonna bring on Element 3D by Video Copilot. Element 3D, okay. Drag that on there, now nothing's gonna show up right away. So go into the scene, well actually before you do that, custom layers, custom texture maps, and set layer one to the pre-comp. And this way, it's gonna be able to use this layer as a texture. So go into scene setup now, and go into um, starter pack. This should just come with um, come with Element 3D, and there are two that we're gonna. You can use either or, either the floor fracture or the ball fracture. Now the thing with these fractured ones is that that means they can sort of come apart. The difference between the floor fracture and say just a primitive um, flat box. These are pretty much the same thing. If we look at them in wireframe, just click there, wireframe, this is just a very, very simple box. But if we click this, you can see there's all this wireframe mesh so that when it breaks apart, these are like the split lines for where it breaks. And so that's all been done for you. So we just have this on one thing. So I'm just going to delete this. Okay. Here we are. We have this. Now click on this and set the diff diffuse. Click on that and make it that layer. So now it says you learn effects on your box thing or whatever text you chose to make it. Now set the diffuse color to white and that looks pretty cool. And so I'm going to leave it how it is. You can play with the reflectivity, the environment map, all that stuff. I'm going to leave this how it is and I'm noticing that because of how it compressed it, it's kind of like a little up and down so just press OK and then I'm gonna go into the pre-comp 
and make that, oh, not that, no, just this. Make that like that, so when it stretches it out, it'll look normal. Now just turn this off so you can't see the background anymore. Then we're going to create a new camera, right click, new camera. I'm going to use a 50 millimeter preset. Click the camera tool or C, same thing, and just drag around until you have that. Now I'm going to hit C again until you get this tool, and then there. It's looking pretty good. Hit V just to go back to your normal tool, and full quality you can just make sure it looks all right. I'm going to move this like around a little bit. Uh, that is about good. I'm actually going to zoom in just a little bit more there. Okay, there we go. Hit V just to go back to your regular tool thing. So now we've created this, but what can we do with it? So this should be on group one, which is, oh, yep, on group one. So go into group one controls, go into the particle look, and multi-object. Enable multi-object. Now you're not going to see a difference right away, but what I'm just going to do is keyframe the displace. So I'm going to set a keyframe at the beginning and make it really, really crazy. Then by two seconds or a little over two seconds, make it zero. Now what's happening here, it split it based along those pre-fractured split lines. So now it can come together well. Okay, so now I'll play it back in full speed. Okay, you may have noticed that ending was very rushed. You didn't really get to see it come together like you should have. So go to like just a little bit before that last keyframe, set another keyframe. And so right now that's not doing anything. That's just saying, yeah, this is where it is at that point in time. Then drag this back a little. So it's like where it was here, but in an earlier point of time. So now this gap that used to just be here takes place over a longer course of time. So now it's going to slow down that ending. So everything will take place more at the same time. Okay, and just to make that go a little smoother, I'm going to select the last two keyframes, hit F9 to easy ease them, which just sort of smooths it out a little bit. So we have created this. Let me just make sure it plays. Okay, and then you can use the same technique, maybe playing with some of these displace tools to, um, to make it go back down. That's really what I did. I played with the displace tools and the rotation, this really just rotates them back and forth. So there are lots of different, you can use scatter to just split them like sideways. I think I used this also when I was getting them off. So now we're good with that. So now example number two. So we've created this, I'm just gonna X out of this. So now this is the example we're going to be creating here, and we don't have much time, but I'm going to try to go through this as fast as possible because I don't want to pass the YouTube time limit. Okay, so really I'm just going to copy where it says element, just control C and control V, and I'll just do a quick breakdown so I don't have to recreate it again. So what I did is I went into um, starter pack and I clicked ball fracture as you can see here. Then I just used the preset. It comes with element 3D, glass tint, drag it on. So you can sort of see the fracture marks, but not, not really. I'm going to turn off draft textures. Okay, so that's pretty much what it'll look like, and it'll break along those little lines you see there, a more detailed version in the wireframe. Okay, so that's really all I had to do right there and then I just left everything else how it was although I could play with the reflection etc so now what I did is I guess this pretty much has everything done for me so I'll just do a quick breakdown um so the glow made a huge difference on this as you can tell the glow is what really made this effect 
So I set to illumination, turned up the intensity, the radius, and then I changed the color, um, and then I turned up the alpha boost. This really, so what an alpha channel is, that's basically transparency. So glow is normally very transparent, but when you boost the alpha, it's less transparency. So you can see here, less transparency, more transparency. So I like to boost the alpha a little bit. So that looks pretty cool, and I was thinking this could be good for a title sequence. So of course I added in a title. I just want to go through before I get to that, how I got to the rest of this. Um, I didn't turn on motion blur, but that would be a good idea. It just takes a lot of rendering time, so I'm leaving that off for now. Ambient occlusion, that'll, that just sort of helps fill in some of the shadows, make it a little more realistic. Fog, I enabled the fog, so as it gets a little further back, it's not as bright. Lighting, I, um, I set it to stylized. You can do whatever you want with that. Okay, so that's the render settings. Then I just keyframe the displace and the, um, the noise evolution just to make it shake a little bit. That's what that does. So I basically set, um, I didn't keyframe it. I used expressions. So I alt clicked on the stopwatch and I would probably do some, I think I did something like time, star, and then like 30 or something like that. So then I just played around with the displace and then the Y rotation, the Z rotation. I got the rotation just right. And the, the thing with that is so the text could be seen. So you'll want to play with all these so that as the camera flies through, the text can be seen. So then we do need to add in a camera. Because right now it's just going like that. It actually does look like it's sort of coming to you, but it's better. And the camera's moving as well, so hit P on the camera. Click the stopwatch to set a keyframe. Move forward to about two seconds. Then just move up in Z space till about there. So it's going really choppy now. And I would adjust all that stuff so it doesn't fly at the lens by using rotation, stuff like that. And then just put a title here, type some text, and then make it 3D. Move it back around, scale it up, and maybe drag it behind. So we have this and just ignore the ones that fly right at the camera. Okay, and a little smoother. Okay, so that could be really cool for a title scene if you want to keep it flying through lots and lots of different stuff. So, thank you for watching this After Effects tutorial. If you liked it, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. So, thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something.